like he'd been startled, kind of woke up potentially and just wondered what was going on. I was lucky enough back in the year 2000 to spend a few weeks there. Still, I haven't seen any other evidence of a capture so significant to a demon. On Are You Haunted, I think my favourite venue has to be... I will be going back there soon. We all will, as Portal Paranormal, to do a full investigation. Exciting. There's a lot of artefacts there that relate to the castle. There's a torture chamber there. I've also been physically attacked there. I was punched. I was privileged enough to host a UK Haunted Live. And a lot of people do say, why do you go and investigate graveyards? Because there's no spirits or ghosts haunting graveyards. New groups, what are they doing? Oh, we do the same thing. It's, it's, rub it's rubbish. Well, hi guys and welcome to another video today this one is a little bit special i have gathered together some of the great minds of the paranormal my friends from the paranormal people that i respect from the paranormal all into one video yes they are going to tell us which is their favorite haunted paranormal location so excited i hope you're ready because because i'm ready i just can't wait Shall we start? Let's do it. So my favorite haunted location, paranormal investigation location, has to be St. Crispin's Mental Asylum in my hometown of Northampton. Yes, I've heard many stories about this place. And unfortunately, when it was in its heyday of being abandoned, full of amazing old, objects, beds, trolleys from when the asylum was in day-to-day -day use. I was too young and not into the paranormal or exploring at this point. So when I eventually got to go, it was still good. It was still active. It was like, wow, this place is massive. Five, six, three-story buildings, admin buildings, clock tower, and the activity that I've caught there over the years it's mind-blowing. I have seen at least two full-bodied apparitions in right, right in front of my face. Both of these happened while filming with Alex from UK Haunted, my paranormal brother. Wow, blew my mind. The voices you capture, the audio you capture there, it's just so creepy, it's dark. There's, a, there's an underground tunnel system. It's just everything you could possibly want from a haunted location to investigate. Wow. I'm speechless sometimes. But unfortunately, it is no longer there. It has been knocked down. Well, apart from the clock tower, I think the clock tower, possibly the admin building, is all that remains of this tremendous, awesome site. Very historic. It's been there for over a hundred years. People may say to me, Mickey, why do you like that place? It's old, it's abandoned, there's nothing left in there. Well, it is so active. I mean, I've been to East Drive, I've been to the ancient Ram Inn, I've been to Draco Tunnels, I've been to many, many places in England, Wales, Scotland, Edinburgh Vaults, wow. But, you know, it's all about evidence. It's all about activity. It's what you capture, what you feel, and for me, St. Crispin's Mental Asylum beats every single one of them. Good afternoon, Mickey York. Right, favourite locations. This is going to have three, and one of them was the one where the kids were talking and singing. That was the British School Museum. Uh, and again, there was only three of us in the room, no one else around, and didn't hear a single thing until we got home, listened to it, and there you go. Little child um, asking where their mummy was. I miss mummy. And then start singing a nursery rhyme. Blows your mind. The other ones would be Hellfire Caves. Um, again, like most investigations you go on, some things are dead, and then other things you get loads. Um, we captured a, allegedly was the guard to the tunnels um, on 
on the SLS. Well, out of everything we recorded that night, that was the only file which was corrupt. We tried everything, couldn't get it. Um, also in the caves, you had this monk singing right from right down the bottom, which echoed right the way through. Um, really eerie. And the other one was Drake Close Tunnels. Um, I think you've been there, I think you'll understand and you'll know why. It's amazing. It goes on for miles. And wherever you go, you hear things. Um, you see shadows, the bangs, crashes. Um, there's no one else around. How do you explain it? There you go, mate. The things you ask for favourite location. I think it's got to be Tudor World um, in Stratford-upon-Avon. Um, it was one of my first investigations that I'd done and I think the place has just got so much history. There's so much to it um, and if you haven't been definitely go because the experience there is, is just amazing and some of the footage that we captured um, was certainly interesting. My name's Ian Lawman and I'm a psychic exorcist. I have two favourite locations really. One of them is Chillingham Castle, and that is really close to my heart because that was the first ever live TV I ever did, and that was with Famous and Frightened. So that location, I think the reason I love it is because there's a lot of family history there. There's a lot of artifacts there that relate to the castle. There's a torture chamber there. So for me, it's very personal, and, and I absolutely adore it. And I just feel there's a lot of residual energy as well, bouncing off all, all the artifacts, which, which is great. But also I have a, a bit of love for Draclo Tunnels as well. I was one of the first people who ever investigated that before a lot of ghost hunts took over. So there's only about four of us who walked around that place. And uh, it was just fabulous. And I think the darkness of it, the dampness, and just the fact that it's tunnels, just kind of just sends them shivers um, through your spine. So Chillingham Castle and Draclo Tunnels, if any of you have them opportunities or them chances to go visit them or investigate, please go, absolutely amazing. Hi everyone, it's Alex from UK Haunted. So favourite location, I would say that would have to be the ancient Ram Inn for me. The place itself is just haunted. There's no other word for it. It's just so creepy, uh, really kind of like going back in time. Obviously the owner, the late John Humphreys is not there anymore. We did a UK Haunted Live, one of the first ones after he sadly passed away. And during the lone vigil, I was asked to go in to the bishop's room so I walked through the house and I was, I was walking through I heard what I could only describe was a man's voice in the same room where John used to sleep like he'd been startled kind of woke up potentially and just wondered what was going on couldn't make out what it said it took me a, a couple of seconds to like double take to realize that something's just happened there I've just heard a man's voice didn't have a camera on me at the time which is always the way but yeah, the ancient Ram Inn for me is the one place that just the draw just keeps you want to go back for more and more. So yeah, that is my favourite location. Hi, I'm Kelly Ellis from Free Spirit Researchers UK. My most favourite venue, I'd have to say that's going to have to be Mansfield the Village. Um, for me personally, I've seen full-bodied apparitions. Um, there's a piano there. I think only maybe two or three keys work. Um, and we've all heard the piano playing a tune, uh, which it couldn't do, not with the three keys. Um, I have also captured, when we slept over on EVP, a ton of conversations going on. Um, however, there wasn't anybody around because we had woken up because it was that loud and we'd all gone to investigate where this could be coming from. and Couldn't find hide nor hair of where it's coming from. So yeah, um, that's me in a nutshell. Thanks ever so much. Bye. Hi guys, my name's Paul and I run Paranormal Analysis down on the south coast in Portsmouth. Now I'd like to start off and say the best place that I feel that I've investigated and I have been doing this for about 16 years or so now and I would say would be Wimmering Manor actually in Portsmouth. Well it's just on the outskirts north of the city. It's a fantastic place, I've experienced this, uh, so much down there. I've been pushed, I've caught some great EVPs and I've even experienced what felt like a little girl ghost run towards me, I heard these footsteps stop right in my face and I felt this real heavy presence there and then this laughing at my face and then this horrible urine smell it was disgusting it was 
yuck. But that was probably the best experience that I've ever had in that location and also in the years that I've been doing paranormal investigations. So for me it would be Wimmering Manor in Portsmouth. I've also been pushed down there as well, I've seen some things that I can't explain and uh, I would like to recommend that high on the list of places to go and investigate if you ever get the chance. I have been asked by my friend Mickey York to do a short video. My name's David Rasney. I'm lead investigator of Entering the Unknown Paranormal. My favourite location, I'd have to say, would be uh, Morecambe Winter Gardens up at Lancashire. You get lots of audibles up there. Uh, lots of, quite a bit of sightings of spirit. Uh, we've heard spirit and we've had trouble with our uh, cameras and devices while we've been there. Uh, lots of interactions with a little girl underneath the stage. So to date, Morecambe Winter Gardens has been my best location so far for evidence that we've caught. Hello, my name's Sadie from Indico Paranormal. I've been ghost hunting now out in the field since 2013 when I first set up Indico Paranormal following numerous personal experience I'd had throughout my life um, but something really bad happened which then prompted me to actually get into investigating the paranormal. My favourite location, I have to say I've been to a lot of really really good locations that I like a lot um, and where I've had experiences and I have always said that it's straight glow tunnels only because the first time I went we didn't get too much or I didn't experience too much but I went about five times in total and every time I went it just got spookier and spookier and I actually saw the apparition of ghostly figure in one of the tunnels which all the people around me collectively saw exactly the same as me and this ghost came walking up towards us upon my request calling out saying please walk towards us and it was and I absolutely crapped my pants the closer it got because I was scared of what its facial features were going to be like i just I, I didn't know you just picture horror in your mind but this thing was actually moving and walking and the people who were there with me can verify this also um i don't know who they are um jared was with me you know him he didn't see it because he was looking off to the other direction but he saw a man a ghostly figure of a man um so yeah i think it has to be drake Lowe tunnels just based on some of the evidence of caught there and the experiences and obviously because of the sheer size of it how dark it is how scary it is and how it gets your adrenaline going thank you so much for asking me to do a video for you um i hope to see you in person soon on an investigation so thank you very much and uh bye for now hi mickey Carl Hutchinson here. Um, you asked me to talk about a bit about my equipment, uh, best bit of equipment I use, some evidence and location. Favourite location, that's a tough one because that's like saying, what's your favourite kid? But it's always been in my top five and for many, many reasons, and I have a feeling that I'm linked to this location and that is Fort Horstead in Chatham in Kent. Um, it's an amazing location um, and I've had some unbelievable activity there from shadows, full apparitions, footsteps, whistles, movement, you name it, we've had it there. I've also been physically attacked there. I was punched um, in uh, a room in, in the fort, which was a bit of a scary moment. Uh, but that would be my number one location um, that I always do. It's always in my top five. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. Hope that's good for you. And I will catch you on the flip. And always remember, don't be scared. Hi everyone. Um, I'm Steve from UK Ghost Hunts and the Haunted Museum in Nottingham. So my favorite location, I would say there's so many different locations uh, that you can actually investigate. And each night is totally different. Um, so you can go one night and not a lot happens, but you can go the night after and totally different. So 
the places that I actually do enjoy, uh, there's so many around England and Europe, so I haven't really got a favourite. Uh, there's a few that stick in my head over the years that uh, totally um, stay, will stay with me forever. And so, not really a favourite location, more different nights, really. So for favourite location, I am really torn between two places. One of them being the ancient Ramin, which is notorious for its hauntings. However, there's a completely different feeling between knowing what you know about the place and being there. Being there is a lot more intense. There's a lot more atmosphere. And it's one of them places that I just, although it creeps me out at the time, I really can't wait to go back. The other place I really, really like is Tudor World in Stratford. So I've been a couple of times and I've really, really enjoyed myself. And although different things happen every time you go, it's very, very consistent with what happens, which I just find incredible. And it's a bit more sort of interesting because you want to keep going back and keep seeing if you have the same responses in the same places. Hi, my name's Marie. I'm founder of UK Ghost Hunts. I'm quite often asked what my favorite location is. Um, it's really hard to choose a favourite because they're all different for different reasons. But if I did have to pick one, it'd be Fort Paul in Hull. Um, it's a massive area to cover as well. You can't really do it in one night, but it's absolutely fantastic. It's the place that I first saw table levitation in there. And you always get activity and it's just tremendous. I love it. Hi there to all my paranormal friends out there. And thank you, Mickey, for allowing me to do this. Uh, my name is Adrian Perkins, and I've been writing the Ghost Detective series of books for a few years. Uh, I'm on number eight now. That comes out, Ghost Detective 8 comes out in May. I've been in the game for 30 years, a little bit more. You need to hear this. Okay. Now that carries on for two minutes, just like that, it just carries on and on. Two minutes, voice activated. The only thing, this was locked away completely for eight hours. Now, where this was is my favourite location as well, because uh, my favourite location is Twinwood Farm in Bedfordshire. It's just off the A6 at Clapham, on the way to Bedford. And it used to be called RAF. Twinwood. It was a night fighter training station, the RAF, and uh, obviously they taught pilots night vision to identify planes, you know, and uh, how to uh, fight just in the dark using instruments. Um, very, very difficult, I would imagine. But anyway, Twinwoods um, is like a, a piece of the war frozen in time. It's got all the buildings, it's got the control tower, it's got flight offices, it's got uh, the pilot quarters, it's got various buildings scattered about all over the place. And it is the best preserved place um, I've ever been to for the Second World War. The stories were fantastic, but there was more to do. And I thought I need to do more. So we did three overnight investigations there. And the first night, I always remember it, I shall never forget it. It was minus five degrees and there was no heating. There were no frills. This place was derelict and it hurt. I must admit the pain, you got uncontrollable shiver and by eight o'clock in the morning, we had had enough. We, I wouldn't have cared if a ghost had walked past me. Bugger off, I wasn't, I was ready to go home anyway. This little tape recorder was placed in a building called the Armoury. Funny that. 
and it was on a, a crushed engine that they'd recovered and put in there and I placed this onto the engine and we locked the building and we were about 20 yards away in a different building doing the major part of the investigation then we went to the control tower and did a bit there but this was on its own until about eight in the morning there were two minutes on there like I say you've just heard it I think I know what it is uh, but I want you to make your own mind up about that so you know I'm not gonna sway you in any way like that because you heard it you may cut your mind what it is but I think Twin Woods is one of those places that it's like every every paranormal person who does the paranormal or paranormal group have their favorite location whether it be a church a castle a building a house whatever you've all got your favorite places and uh, that is my favorite place uh, just before i go and thank you mickey for letting me do this there's a lot of groups out there and there's a lot of individuals i've seen a lot of people come and go over my years of doing this uh, I, I call it a burnout you start very keen you go through the stages the different stages like going to school you go through the different stages of paranormal learning and then you become disillusioned and you disappear groups have a different way of doing things uh, they start all keen everybody's in there I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that and all got your little bits to do and then you individuals become disillusioned and you start to break up the cohesiveness of the group and they go into self-destruct or they splinter off into other groups it happens all the time the most natural way of doing things is with a small group a very small group your friends your relatives your wife or whatever you do them with your friends it's an easier way it's a more comfortable way of investigating but at the moment there's a lot of backstabbing there's a lot of jealousy between groups it's the most awful thing to have people who are trying to explain paranormal events people experimenting getting it right and finding something new, other groups becoming jealous. Why? Why are you becoming jealous? Ask them if you can use their technique to progress or if you can help them. You know, I've, over the years, I've, I've invented experiments uh, to, for people to do. I want them to use them. I want them to change them. I want them to make them better because by doing that we progress we don't just go around in a circle at the moment it's like people going around in a circle everybody's doing the same thing new groups what are they doing oh we do the same thing it's, it's, it's rubbish you've got to progress so stop bickering enjoy what you do you know stop messing about get on with it and i'll hopefully after all this rubbish is over get out there back to doing my talks, lectures and uh, events and I hope I'll maybe able to join up with one or two of you groups out there in the future. Mickey, I'm still coming to uh, join you on one of your investigations one day, I'll tell you. Um, thank you for allowing me to do this and love to all of you. See you all soon. Bye. <laughs>
Hello guys, first off, uh, I just want to thank Mickey for letting me come on the channel, inviting me on the channel. First of all, sorry, I'll introduce myself. So, I'm Kurt Roberts, I'm 27 years old, I'm from the South Wales Valleys and I'm in a team called Forsaken Paranormal. My favourite location has to be Drake Low Tunnels. I've been to Drake Low Tunnels once as Forsaken Paranormal and numerous times on public events, which they're okay, but you know. Um, and so much stuff has just happened in Drake Low Tunnels. It, it is absolutely incredible. In a weird way, it feels like home for me, but a lot of stuff have happened there. Hopefully Mickey will put a link either across here or down by there for our Drake Low Tunnels investigation if you did want to check it out. And yeah guys, this is just my little video like I said. I want to give a big shout out to Mickey for inviting me on his channel and hopefully he'll allow me to plug this but follow us at Forsaken Paranormal for more investigations when we are allowed to investigate. I also have a personal channel guys which is Kurt Roberts where uh, I'm more of a travel slash adventure photographer on this so if you do like that type of thing then you may like my channel but yeah thanks so much for allowing me to come on this video Mickey and make sure if you're new to his channel guys smash the like button and subscribe for more of his content. Hi my name's Tom I run the channel Haunted Finders on YouTube. In regards to my favourite location, um, it's, it's hard to say a favourite location. I tend to focus more on like ancient graveyards, ancient forests. If somebody said to me, uh, I'll give you the choice of going to a massive haunted castle or a forest that's a thousand or two thousand years old, I'd choose the forest all the time. Um, or a graveyard, a thousand year old graveyard. I've been to quite a lot and had a lot of activity at places like that. And a lot of people do say, why do you go and investigate graveyards? Because there's no spirits or ghosts haunting graveyards. And I have to disagree with that like 100% because I've had so many encounters, so many experiences, and I've captured so much evidence in graveyards, which I just don't believe that they are not haunted. Um, as for forests, I probably have to say, um, if somebody said, obviously, gives me the option of a castle or a forest or a graveyard, I'd go for the forest. Um, and the reason being is, if you think of some of these ancient forests, especially in England, that uh, some of them are 200, 300, 400, 1,000, and multiple thousands of years old. And there's so much things that have happened in forests. There were settlements in forests. Uh, obviously, people lived in forests. There were battles in forests. There were burials in forests. There have been so many different kinds of rituals done in forests especially if you look back at like the viking period and the viking invasions and stuff a lot of them settled in forests and battled in forests um so i've had probably some of my best evidence um in haunted forests or woodlands and yeah i'd have to say a haunted forest would be my favorite type of location if I had to give a specific one, probably, I don't know, I've been to so many, I'd probably say Sherwood Forest. Um, that's a good one. Obviously Sherwood Forest goes back thousands and thousands of years. There's been multiple settlements in there. A lot's gone off in Sherwood Forest and I've had countless, countless paranormal experiences um, in the actual Sherwood Forest itself. So yeah, I'd say Sherwood Forest. On Are You Haunted, we like to use a back to basics investigation technique. Um, as far as favourite venues concerned, on Are You Haunted, I think my favourite venue has to be, it's a very close run thing, but I think I'm going to go with Wigan House, um, where one of our team members, Jane, um, saw uh, a full apparition. And for me, I love anywhere that's underground. I don't know why, I've just got this weird attraction to things that are underground. So the last episode again that we did, we picked up amazing EVP on the Zoom, was a place called Keithley Underground Streets. Um, episode is called Step Out of the Darkness. Amazing place. What's happening? Tell you exactly what's happening. It's paranormal things, that's what's going on. 
He's like, no, a good friend, Mick, he's asked us to get on you. Yeah? Have a bit of chat about, you know, some equipment, experiences, locations, etc. So that's what we're going to do. Tell him who we are. So here we are. We are Portal Paranormal, me and him. You might recognise us from other teams and other investigations. We've worked worldwide, haven't we? Yeah, Let's be true honest, story. Like. And also, Viking Views might recognise us from. But in terms of paranormal, we are Portal Paranormal. Damn straight. A recently established team. Yeah. Bit messed up over the last year. Nothing to do with us. Everything uh, else has been on around us. But tell them where you can find us. If you go onto YouTube, we don't come up instantly unless you type in Portal Paranormal Skirid. Our one proper investigation on there, the Skirid, that comes up immediately. Link on the screen, innit? it? And it's not that we haven't done other locations. We have done them. We've got about three, four lined up already. That's already recorded. We didn't want to drop them last year with all everything that was going on. Didn't seem right. Uh, Wanted it to get back to normality so we can start spunking them out. Literally spunking them out on a regular basis. Sorry, Jesus. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's what's going on. So, yeah, thanks, Mickey. Let's get into it. And hello, everybody. I'm doing the filming today, so I'm not going to be in this 24-7. So I need to pop back over there now and grab a camera. Excuse me. <laughs> so locations, my favourite locations to investigate. Now I tell you what, there's quite a few. Right from a few years in Wales, around the UK, right over to like the Queen Mary in Long Beach. That is an experience. Through to the Goldfield in Nevada, the Goldfield Hotel. Been lucky enough to go there, and I will be going back there soon. We all will, as Portal Paranormal, to do a full investigation. Exciting. But there we go, UK stuff. I tell you what, Drake Low Tunnels, and I've mentioned it previously, I've probably spent about 15 or 16 nights under that place over the last four or five years. Incredible. Um, East Drive, another one that, you know, brings high. But, you know, all these different places that people go to week in, week out. Scared, incredible. Sometimes it's a private home you go to that, like, takes you back the most. Now, as a place locally to us, Varteg, we call it Varteg House, Demon House, whatever you want to call it. It's a little old miners cottage up in the valleys but i can tell you what people moved in there within a day they moved back out we went and investigated it some stuff happened we went back give her another go I, it just went even crazier and then we went back a second time again and it just literally blew my mind the stuff that happened in there i was touched yeah i was actually scrammed in there we've caught breaths we caught things moving we had personal attack stuff towards dan and i tell you what that episode is going to be dropping on portal soon with a couple of changes but that's going to be on there soon for you to see as well. So I want to bring all that to you. So look out for Demon House. So there you go. That's our little take on the world, isn't it? We just want to thank quickly Mickey for inviting us to do that's this. True. Much appreciated. Look forward to doing some stuff for you when all this is over as well. Definitely. But until next time. Whoosh. Mickey baby. Uh, Alright, Mickey's asking me a few questions. Favourite place? Pff, oh, loads. If I could go somewhere right now, Dre Clay Tunnels. Dre Clay Tunnels is just a mind scramble. Uh, the cool thing about Dre Clay is just shut off to everything. There's no light from the outside world, there's no sounds from the outside world. And if you're with a group of people that you trust, it is absolutely banging. So yeah, Dre Clay. Dre Clay with the Necrophonic. Because it's good having the Necrophonic in Dre Clay because you can't get no signal in Dre Clay. So yeah, stay cool and keep it fun. How are we doing everybody? It's Rich here from West London Paranormal, WLP. Hope you're all good. We are still in a mega lockdown and it is depressing. There's no getting away from it. It is absolutely depressing and Mickey York a good friend of mine has asked me to do a little video for you we love the Hellfire Caves that's in High Wycom and we will go back there and back there and back there we have had lots of stuff come through EVP wise at High Wycom so from me Rich WLP Mark we wish you a great year we will be getting out soon as soon as the restrictions allow all right much love and good health. Uh, I'm Ian Barrow. I'm owner and lead investigator with Residential Haunting, who are a private case team that investigate in people's homes that are experiencing suspected paranormal activity. 
Uh, my favourite place to investigate to date would be the True Crime Museum in Hastings, uh, where we've had a, a wide range of evidence captured, uh, an AVP, which by far is the best we've ever caught, which basically was a young girl shouting mama. It was so loud it was heard on every item of recording equipment. And also we had several occasions where the sound of metal being dragged across the floor feet away from us uh, was completely unexplained. Hi, um, I'm Becky and I work for a company called Haunted Houses Events. Um, I've been with them for six years now and it's been amazing basically. I've been around the country um, we've been to some amazing, amazing places. Probably my favourite locations. I've got three that stick in mind. Um, the Leopard Inn in Stoke-on-Trent. Um, Four Crosses in Cannock. And the Judges Lodgings in Wales. I oh, know, four, sorry. Penny Lan in Wales as well. Because um, in the Leopard Inn we got um, things being thrown, um, footsteps, and we've had uh, disembodied voices as well. Uh, four crosses in Cannock, we've had um, footsteps, we've had equipment going off literally all night long. Um, and then towards the end of the night, I was with two guests, and we were sort in this room and we were asking out, we've got the spirit box on and we heard this like loud noise so we were quiet for a minute and we heard get out on the spirit box and then we heard a boy then we heard like um a bang on the door and this door swung open um and then judges lodgings we got uh, footsteps and stuff when we were doing a, a team investigation and penny Lan, in Wales, uh, we we were sat in a room, and we heard this man talk like mumbling, but we couldn't make out what the words he was saying. And we thought like we were setting up before all our guests turned up. And me and a team member, we heard uh, a little boy or girl giggling, and um, so we went upstairs and we felt like really really cold I've got quite a few places that I really like and they're the top ones that I'd say I haven't, got a re I haven't really got a favourite Um, so yeah thank you my name's Lee Davis I'm co-founder of HBI Haunted Britain Investigations in the UK my favourite or our favourite location and again this would have to be where we caught that EVP, the old trip to Jerusalem Inn in Nottingham. We've investigated there about nine to ten times over the last ten years. And it never it never fails to deliver. I've had shadow figures, we've had loads of EVP, we've had REM pod devices alarming seemingly intelligently to questions being asked. We've had poltergeist activity there. Um, one of the most profound things that happened to me was we were sitting in the rock lounge, nice and quiet, nothing had really happened for a good 40 minutes. And all of a sudden I felt this blast of cold air just almost smack me across the side of my face. It was strong enough for me to jump up swearing. Um, didn't hear anything. I had a teammate sitting next to me. He didn't hear anything, was quite shocked. You know, I made him jump when I jumped up. And then when we listened back to the audio during the evidence analysis, seconds before I react to this breath, you clearly hear something that sounds like it's hissing at me or spitting at me. So yeah, the, the old trip to Jerusalem, every single time it, it delivers for pretty much all kinds of evidence. So that would have to be one of my favorite locations. Cheers, stay safe.
Hi guys, Mark here from West London Paranormal. So what is my favourite place to investigate, you ask? It's simple. There's two places that I like the most. But the one that tips it for me is because of the evidence that we've gained from that place. And still, I haven't seen any other evidence of a capture so significant to a demon. And that is Cash's Well. Cash's Well is located in Langdon Hills in Essex, in an eerie forest. I mean, as soon as you go in there, the atmosphere straight away is just horrible. When you go in there, you feel like you're being watched. And that was the case when we investigated that place. Just to quickly summarise what we actually caught in Cash's Well. This, coming up next, is the picture of what we believe was Bale showing himself. So there you have it, that is Bale, or is it not? You decide, it's left on many unanswered questions in the paranormal field. All I'm gonna say is Mickey, maybe you wanna go and try that place one night. Who knows, Bale might show himself to you as well. My favorite location that I've probably been to, I would say is the Edinburgh vaults and the underground streets. Uh, that place was pretty amazing. Um, just a lot of history there and, and stuff, but no, it was very creepy and really enjoyed that one. Hi, I'm C. And I'm Dean. Harridge Fort is my favourite place. Harridge Fort, I know inside and out, um, but it never ceases to amaze me. Um, something different happens there every single time. And I think you think the same, don't you? Yeah, I don't think there's a place that is so, you know, amazing. Beacon Hill, on the other hand, which is beside Harridgeport, but not open to the public. Um, when they do open, we will be going back because the day we went, it was just me, Dee, and the man walking around in his bright yellow jacket allowed to go in. So, but apart from that, if you ever want to reach us, we are on CND Paranormal Investigators on Facebook or CNDPI on Twitter. So, other than that, we'd like to say thank you and over and out. Hey, Mickey, how goes it, fella? Um, thanks for letting me um, come on board and contribute to your video. So, for example, I'll combine this with the with locations wise, really. Um, no particular order uh, mermaid inn in rye fantastic place it goes back to around about the i think the 1300s something like that and it was in an area which was um, ruled by the notorious hawkehurst gang who were a bunch of smugglers bully boys you name it they were they were a rough crowd and that area of rye where the mermaid in was kind of a no-go area for, for people after a certain time of the day. And we've checked this place out a couple of times. And there is, in the main bar, there is a particular seat. And this is all old, old period oak furniture they've got in there. There's a particular seat which people quite often have said they've seen an apparition in. And it's only this one particular seat. And uh, it turned out that when we were in there, I was actually sitting in that particular seat and I have my K2 with me most places where we go and I put this on the table just to see if it, if it went off at all and it started to go off and I thought okay well you go for the you go for the rigmarole of trying to work out if it's debunkable or not and it was responding specifically to questions I was asking and it turns out that yeah I was sat in this guy's seat and uh, um, it turns out that he, he sits there and, and ogles the girls when they're in the bar which was quite funny, but we managed to chat. We got chatting with a couple that were rent, that were hiring a room, and they they were fascinated with the paranormal. So they asked us. I had the kit with me. You know, I'd gone down there hoping that something like that might happen, and we went into the room. And while I was setting up, Michelle and 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 the uh, the female and other female in the um, the group walked into the bottom room, and they said hello and immediately a voice came out, a female voice saying hello back. Now Laura sod was, I was still unpacking, I didn't have anything recording. That would have been absolutely brilliant if, we, if I'd managed to capture that. Um, so that was a full on 
uh, contextual response to walking in and saying hello in a full-on voice. It was like there was a, you know, another person in that room. My favourite location. That's a tricky one. I've I've narrowed it down though. I've narrowed it down. I'm from Northampton, and I was privileged enough to host a UK Haunted Live uh, paranormal investigation at a museum in Northampton, the Abington Abbey. And wow, absolutely. Do you know what? I mean, I I've I visited the location over the years. Nothing to do with the paranormal. And I thought to myself, how lucky am I to have all this access to this wonderful, wonderful building? I mean, the, the history of the building is just immense. And to have the, the opportunity just to, to freely walk around all areas, absolutely fantastic. So that has to be one of my, well, it, it's, it's so hard, isn't it, when you say, what's your favourite location? I mean, I've been to thousands of locations all over the country. Well, I'm bringing it back to home, to Northampton, Abington Abbey. So, um, my favourite venue, yeah, very difficult. I mean, we went to an awful lot over the last 15 years, but one that stands out for me is the Moorer Furnace in Leicestershire. Um, yeah, apart from anything else, I mean, it, it's stunningly fantastic. I mean, I mean, when you get there, the the um, the grounds are enormous, I and mean, you you've got two gigantic buildings, um, one of which contained the furnace itself. And the rest of it was probably part of the processing plant, I seem to remember. Um, please forgive my terrible history. Anyhow, um, yeah, it's, it's over 200 years old. Um, used child labour, just like pretty much every single place did back then. So it probably wasn't the happiest of places to be. Um, yeah, our, our experiences of going there, fantastic. I mean, I mean the, the, the activity was, was, was tremendous every time um it's got a big canal next to it so flowing water again the association with the paranormal um phenomena uh as anyone works in the industry and probably people who don't will, will be aware of so so yeah that in itself it is a good thing um apart from the mosquitoes so yeah take lots of mosquito spray if you're gonna be outside yeah as, as you walk away from the venue you come across the lime kiln furnaces that is also paranormally active so please take time to go and check that out and further still which is just like a small walk away there is a forest or a wood but yeah that is really good so please please take the time to go there as well yeah we, we, we got some really good results there and I mean I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to spoil it for you guys by telling you because I'd like you to go there um, with an unbiased opinion of it or unbiased expectations and see for yourself what you get. But well worth the trip. So yeah, there you go. Take care, be safe. Hello, my name's Dr. Kieran O'Keefe. A particular favorite ghost hunting location would have to be Hampton Court Palace. I was lucky enough back in the year 2000 to spend a few weeks there with a research team from University of Hertfordshire where we were looking at the idea of suggestion but also looking at environmental variables and their influence on people's haunting experiences. A fantastic, fantastic location with an amazing history and ghost stories going back hundreds and hundreds of years. One of my favourite ghost hunting locations would have to be one of the Second World War underground Nazi bunkers on the Channel Islands. This is a location that I investigated with my wife. In fact, it's a location I investigated with my wife on a number of different occasions. And she has experienced some very, very bizarre phenomena there and also captured quite an intriguing photograph. So as well as being a fantastic location with an amazing history, it is also a location that I associate with, with my wife. So therefore it's one of my favorites. Hi everybody. Um, well, my name is Kelly Peffers and I am a mom. I am a wife. Uh, I'm also studying my bachelor's in education and in my fun time, I am a paranormal investigator. So Mickey's asked me to kind of tell you guys my favorite place to investigate. Um, now I have one firm kind of, it's gonna sit there forever because it was my first official um, investigation and that has to be the 
ancient ram inn and because it's not very far from me it is one of my favorite places um i think it's because it just feels like home i can't really explain it it's just just feels like i've always been there um i've got some interesting stuff there um but it more just feels like home i can't explain it it's just wonderful um so i have had um experiences there where i've touched a ram's head um in the pub in the pub section in there and i've had a big bang and that's kind of scared me to death that was a really interesting thing so basically it just made this massive bang and me and my friend just kind of ran um i've had another experience where um uh, it's actually barry's fault and it scared me to death i'm not gonna lie i really did feel scared um <laughs> so basically they'd all gone out and i went up to the toilet and if anyone's ever been there it's just creepy that toilet is just scary i just don't like it anyway i was going to the toilet and i didn't realize i was the only person in the building and i didn't until barry kind of shouted up kelly can you turn the lights off on your way down that i realized that i was all alone <laughs> And I remember just absolutely cacking myself, turning off all the lights as I'm running down the stairs and trying to get down that windy staircase. Now, I haven't really had much actually happen to me and stuff there. I've had like torches turning on and off, but as I said, I'm kind of on the fence because the mechanism is inside getting hot and cold. Hi, Mickey. So, favourite location? Um, this... This is tricky. I mean, I've been to quite a few locations, big and small, um, well known and not so well known. But the one that always comes back to my head when someone asks me about favourite locations, I think I'm going to have to say Drake Low Tunnels. Um, it's the place where I've had the most of my personal um, experiences, um, where things have um, physically affected me and I have felt and sensed presences you know within the tunnels and I've also witnessed other investigators experience similar things noise phenomena um, I remember being there with you Mickey and Alex UK haunted um, and hearing uh, an old-fashioned phone ringing you know the old bring bring so that was really really great and a night when we were there when the lovely Eamon Van Harris was there with one of his amazing machines um, it was Christmas Eve and we were singing uh, Jingle Bells and a voice came back through the box and finished the line for us, which again was amazing. So Drake Low Tunnels, um, yeah, consistently um, I've had results there, um, not just with equipment, but personally. Um, so yeah, I think for now, that's my favourite location. Hi everyone, this is John from Wednesday Paranormal and Bizarre Dimensions. Um, I hope you're keeping very safe and well. My favourite place to investigate has to be Smithwick Baths uh, near Birmingham in the West Midlands. So many levels of spirit there. Uh, it's a 1930s Art Deco swimming complex. It uh, was used in the Second World War for an air raid shelter and it was also used to store bodies during the Second World War from the bombings in Birmingham. So many levels. Uh, if you haven't been there before, I suggest you go. It's well worth a visit. All the very best to you. Please stay safe and well, and we hope to see you as soon as we can get out there. All well, take care. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Hi guys, it's Ali Key here from alikeyofficial.com and Hontex TV on YouTube. Now, I'm going to talk about my favourite um, location I've ever investigated. Now, the, that, that specific location is no longer around, okay? It's not, it cannot be investigated at all. It is the Boys Borstal in Desford. My wife, Sadie, and I um, were absolutely honoured to have been given the keys to be given full access to the boys borstal in Desford by the owners. To investigate it over and over and over again, it's probably the most active place I have ever investigated. No word of a lie. Again, 
with a camera, different camera this time, that was a night vision Sony Handycam that we used, and we were just filming in and around this lovely old building. We didn't hear it at the time. However, there was a spirit voice imprintation. Imprinted directly onto the camera. And we didn't hear it at the time, but when we listened back, there was an EVP on, directly imprinted. A spirit voice imprintation on the camera that said, in an Irish accent, paired and wagon. And then we found out that that was a slang word in the, the um, urban kind of uh, Irish kind of dictionary, that it was slang. But then we found out because um, it said the, the, the location was attached um, to an old folks home that an old, an Irish bloke had actually died not that long ago. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope I didn't bore the life out of you. On Hon Tex TV on YouTube. I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you so much for all your guys' support. Thank you so much to Mickey York as well for asking me to do this segment for your new video, Mickey. Thank you very, very much. And I hope all of you are safe and well. And I bet you all can't wait because we can't wait to get back out there and investigate the paranormal safely when we are all able to do so. But for me, Ali Key, it's over and out. Thank you all once again and take care of yourself and I'll see you all very, very soon. So there we go, guys. Everybody's favorite paranormal location to investigate some amazing places there. And I'm not surprised, but some of them quite common. Quite a lot of people have the same location because once you get a good hit in a location, it is difficult not to go back. What can I say? So many credible people in this video, so many great experiences, so many pieces of evidence. What can I say? Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Everybody that has taken part, taking the time to record a video and send it to me. You guys are awesome. Thank you so, so much. Anyway guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure you smash that thumbs up button and uh, subscribe if you're new. And if you are, hello, my name is Mickey. You can follow every single person in this video. All their links are in the description if you wanna to go to their YouTube channels. Go do it. These guys are awesome. Please, please do it. And nothing else to say really guys, apart from thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. See you later.